So you may have already heard me mention this, but the reason we're kind of taking 16 out of order is so that when you see some things in the sky, when you have these visible things that you see, I want you to be able to know what they are, in part because um, you may want to include them in your photo project. So earlier in, chap in Unit 1, we said that light can, incoming energy from the sun, here's my incoming energy, when it interacts with stuff in the Earth's atmosphere, that energy can either be, um, let's see, absorbed, that energy can be transmitted, or that energy can be redirected. And there are two types of redirection. We talked about reflection, goodness, re reflection, <laughs> and scattering. Okay, so actually as we now look at some neat, cool, some things, other things that the atmosphere does, again it has to do with incoming energy, specifically incoming light. And remember that light actually is a mixture of Roy G. Biv. White light has red, orange, yellow, um, green, blue, indigo, and violet in them. And just kind of like we talked about in Unit 1, what's going to happen to this incoming light has to do with the particles it hits. Um, we're going to talk about how the presence of water droplets, where's my thing, the presence of water droplets can give optical phenomenon, the presence of ice crystals can give certain um, things we see in the sky, and here where it says gases, I want to kind of start to set the stage. Um, it's not just the specific gas, more it's the temperature of the atmosphere the temperature of the atmosphere, of the, of the gas in the atmosphere. That gives us certain neat things that we see. Okay, So four basic things that can happen with incoming light as it interacts with um, the various temperatures of the atmosphere or liquid water droplets or ice crystals is that light can be reflected, that light can be refracted, that light can be diffracted and that light and something we call interference can occur with that light uh, with depending upon the particle it's interacting with or the gas it's interacting with. So we're going to take a look at each one of these starting with reflection. Of course reflection is what we do when we look in a mirror and we talked of, it's kind of intuitive that like if this is incoming light, let's see here's your mirror surface mirror surface, this is incoming light, okay. We say the angle at which it comes in, so let's just look at this light beam here. Uh, the way you measure the angle is you draw a line perpendicular to your surface, and that one's perpendicular to the surface, okay. And then the angle the incoming light makes with the perpendicular line is the angle that it's coming in. Um, that's the angle of incidence, and the angle of reflection is right here for that ray. So if I call this alpha, these two angles are equal. Angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. So when we, with reflection, we very much know where that light beam is going to go. Like when you look in a mirror, you very much know um, where that light is going to be reflected to. And so that happens in the Earth's atmosphere, especially here in a little bit when we talk about rainbows, we're going to see that light is reflected at the back of a water droplet. Is that crazy or what? Now, if the surface is not smooth, if the surface is rough, it kind of looks, looks like scattering, but actually it's, it's, it's reflection, but your, um, your surface how do I say it? It's, it's just not smooth. Okay, so this is a type of uh, reflection off of a rough surface. And in each case, the angle of, um, angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection, but the surface is rough. And so it kind of gets a, a pinging sort of thing. Um, one of the things I think would be neat when I'm demonstrating this in the face-to-face class is to take a sheet of aluminum foil you know, hold it up, and we all look at it, and then take that same sheet of aluminum foil and crinkle it up and look at it again, and you're going to get a different sort of sensation when that light is reflecting off of a rough surface. 
Now one image you might uh, include in your photo project is this. And, and what you're seeing, what I want to draw your attention to, is this image of the sun being reflected in this body of water here. And it looks elongated like that. And actually, um, the reason you don't see just a simple disk has to do with the fact that it's a rough surface instead of a smooth surface. So definitely fair game. Two, one. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put this slide in here, but after uh, I, I got to thinking about this slide, I'm not real thrilled on including it in, in lecture at this point. So if you want to put skip on that, you can. It's a neat thing. I want you to look at it and read about it. Uh, it won't be on your test, and so I'm going to go on with the next section.